Hey Comets, welcome to another week of learning. Um, if you're like my family, we uh, got the packet for last week, uh, late last week, so it's possible that you're just now working through that. Now, if that's the case, I've got some videos already up on the YouTube channel. You can check those out, and it'll help you through this packet, all right, the April 6th packet. But I'm going to start going through um, some of the lessons in case you either got the packet already or you have been working on um, the one from the online, if you downloaded it from there or printed it out. Uh, so the packet looks like this, April 13th and April 20th. Okay, so this is week three and week four, okay, if you're keeping track. Um, we're going to obviously look at the math section here. <clears throat> So let's scroll down. It's going to start talking about ratios. Okay, so there we go. Math week three and four. So first part is just a little review. Two ways to describe ratios are part to part and part to whole relationships. Okay, because a ratio is a comparison of two quantities. All right. So part to part compares two individual quantities, while a part to whole compares one of the parts to the total number of pieces. It's a little bit like fractions. All right, so if this is our example. We have three blues and two yellows. You could say there are blues to yellows, there are yellow parts to blue parts, or there are blue parts to total parts, yellow parts to total parts. Okay, so each of these is a ratio, which is the comparison of two quantities. All right, so it says down here, analyze each statement, determine whether a part-to-part -part or a part-to-whole relationship exists, and explain your reasoning. All right, so the first one, there are nine girls for every two boys in our class. So if we look at that, <clears throat> are we looking at a part-to-part -part or a part-to-whole? Because it's one of those two. Well, the whole class is going to be represented by how many total students there are, okay? So in this case, this is a part, and this is a part, so A would be a part-to-part -part relationship. And my marker didn't work. Of course it did. All right? So I guess I don't really need to write that out. You can guys can see that. It is a part-to-part -part relationship. Why? Because both girls and boys, they're different parts of the whole. B, three out of every five students in our class will help paint the mural in the library. Okay? Well, three <clears throat> represents a part that's going to help, okay, paint the mural. Every five students represents a total, okay? So three is a part out of every five is a whole. So this would be a part to whole ratio, okay? And that's because it's comparing a part to a whole. All right, so you guys can finish off that page, okay? Probably no problems there. All right, write a part to whole rate, um, part to part, and a part to whole ratio for each problem situation. Okay, so it says of the 200 students surveyed in fifth grade, 120 prefer banana and 80 prefer apples. All right, so if we're doing a part to part, we would do the 120 banana over the 80 apples. But if it's a part to whole, we're doing um, the 80 apples to the 200 students. Okay, because that is a total down there. All right, so two, Serena's book collection contains 23 fiction books and four nonfiction books. So we want a part to part. Okay, so I would say one of my parts is the 23 fiction books, and the other part is the four nonfiction. Okay, that's my part to part ratio. Okay? There you go. Now, here, I need a part to whole. Okay, so I could choose fiction or nonfiction. I'm going to do nonfiction. Well, let's just keep it straight. Let's do, non, let's do fiction. So 23 fiction over the total number of books. So I got 23 and 4, so that would be 27 total. All right, so that's how you do a part-to-part -part ratio, and then this would be a part-to-whole ratio. All right. Now, down here, we're solving these problems.
Okay, looking at these problems here, um, we're completing this ratio table. So um, their hint says to focus first on um, <clears throat> this ratio right here, because this is the one that's complete. Um, so if you look at it this way, we got yellow paint up here, we got blue paint down here. We know that it's four down here, then eight, 16, and eight up here, and 16 right here. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, how do I get from, let's say, eight to 16, all right? Think about scaling up and scaling down again, all right? I need to double it, right? Either add eight, which would work, but it's like multiplying it by two. So to get from here to here, I have to multiply by two, okay? And if I do that on these top numbers, I need to do the same thing here to keep it proportional. All right, so 16 times two is going to be 32. Okay, so that would be one of our answers. And then to go backwards, we're going to go from 16 to eight. That's like dividing by two. So I need to divide eight by two and I would get four. Okay, and then eight, Divided by four would be like dividing by two again. So four divided by two is going to be two. Okay, so those are the, the three that we need to fill in. And okay, remember, just scaling up and scaling down. Okay, I think that's basically what needs to happen here um, for the rest of these problems. Okay, and remember to focus on the one that you know, and then scale up and scale down from there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> finally on this page, um, problem solving with equivalent ratios, okay? <clears throat> so here they give us the whole table, <clears throat> okay? And I'm just going to summarize by saying here's the x value, here's the y value. It's 1 and 3, 2 and 6, 4 and 12, and 5 and 15, okay? And then we're given... A place to graph. Now, my graph's not going to be as neat as the graph here on this page, okay? But at least you'll hopefully be able to see what you need to do to set it up, <clears throat> okay? So this is the x value, this is the y value. So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, okay? <clears throat> Let me enlarge the screen a little bit so you can see a little bit more what I'm doing. All right, now we want to label this since our x <clears throat> is down here, we need to get from one all the way to five. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And then I'm going to go this way from three to 15. <clears throat> I might count by threes. So three, six, nine, 12, 15. So here's one, two, three, four, five. And here's 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. That way all of our data fits inside of our graph. Okay, now we need to graph. We've got our 1, 3. So I go over 1 and I go up 3 and I put a point there. We go over 2 and I go up 6. I put a point right there. I go over 4 and then 12 and I put a point right there. And then go over 5 and 15 and I put a point right there. Now, again, these are not exact. You can kind of see a trend line forming here. I probably got off a little bit on that one. Okay. <clears throat> but that's pretty close. All right. So I don't think there's anything else that we need to do there just to graph. All right. So I think you guys can get that one. Um, I'm going to stop it right here, but I'm going to try and make another video today on the next pages since they're very similar. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.